So Gerard Carmichael was on The Breakfast Club and he issued an apology for Dave Chappelle comments. Quote, I deeply regret saying anything about Dave to the press. So evidently, uh, Gerard and um, Dave, uh, I guess they talked on the phone and then kind of hashed it out. And Gerard said if he ever had an issue with anything Dave says in the future, he'll just call Dave personally, which is fine. I think what the issue with Gerard, and it's not really his fault, but I think it's the media's fault, is that the media wanted Gerard to replace Dave Chappelle as one of the top comedians. And that's never going to happen because <laughs> Gerard just isn't as funny as Dave. Like it used to be like back in the, like in the 90s and the 80s, there were so many really good, and even 2000s, there were so many really good comedians. The media just kind of just closed their eyes and just picked the person because they were already really, really, really funny. Today is not like that. I think today, like, it's not just Gerard. Every time I hear the media say, like, this person's the next greatest comedian. No. Like, there was this woman of, like, a few years ago, and they, I, think, I think she retired. And they said, well, she's retiring from comedy, but she's brilliant. She wasn't, she was okay to you, <laughs> but she's not okay. She's not, she wasn't really that funny. Like, the, I knew the media is not doing their job is when they came across somebody late. Like, when the Kings of Comedy finally, when he finally hit, they acted like Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey and D.L. Hughley and Cedric Gay Entertainer were brand new. And any of, any of us who knew comedy, who watched comedy, knew that Bernie Mac and Cedric and D.L. and Steve were funny on Def Comedy Jam. Even like when Martin Lawrence came over Big Mama's house, a lot of them, a lot of these media folks, like, oh my God, Martin Lawrence is so funny. We knew that he was funny, funny on Martin. Martin is hilarious. No Emmys, but episodes of Martin still hilarious. We knew he was funny playing Bilal in House Party. But the media is always late on this. So when the media is trying to say, like, what well, this person has next, they're usually pretty wrong about this. So Gerard was saying, like, he's, he, he, he's, he loves Dave. He said he, Dave's a bright light in a dying industry of stand-up comedy. And I totally agree. I've been saying this forever. Stand-up comedy is not a really, there's not a lot of really good stand-up comedians out here. There's people, I think the problem today is that you can just upload clips and put it out there. And if you've got like a whole bunch of fans, uh, Gaffey Comedian, yeah, Gaffey Comedian said this. He said there's, there's so many people posting like TikTok videos and things like that. And they have millions of fans and comedy clubs book these folks. And for a headliner, you do like 45 minutes to 60 minutes. And when they get to these comedy clubs, they're not good at it. They, they, because most of them are really just headliners. They're, they're good for maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes. But to do a whole hour, they just can't pull it off. Like I tried that once. Like here, here in Akron, there, there was a, there was a, uh, I think it's called the Funny Bone or someplace like that. And um, they had uh, one Saturday morning say, "Learn how to be a stand-up comedian." So there was a guy, there was a stand-up comedian, and he, he talked to us about what what a headliner does, what a feature does, um, what a, what a, what an opener does. And he said, "We're gonna give you a scenario, uh, write some jokes, and then you have one minute to tell your jokes." I was like, "I got this in the bag." <laughs> I was like, I'm funny, because I think I'm kind of witty, but, you know. So I was like, okay, my jokes. I was like, Kevin Lockett. It's like, all right. Get up there. Man, that light shines. That, like, poof. That light comes into your eyes. You're like, how's everybody doing out there? And then, so then you, I think I went, so I went through my jokes, and I was like, how many, how many, how much longer do I have? The guy said, you got 45 seconds, Kev. <laughs> I did all my jokes in 15 seconds. So even though I don't think Gerard Carmichael is a great stand-up comedian or even a good stand-up comedian, I admire him for what he does because being on the stage and telling jokes is hard. doesn't matter what level you are. You can be Dave Chappelle or some person in your local city telling jokes who, work, who works a day job and, and tries to be a stand-up comedian at night. That job is hard. And so I look at Gerard, it's like, I respect the fact that you're doing comedy. I just don't think you're as funny because people have been telling you that you're funny. Like people can't tell me from his last comedy special what was really funny. Like if I said Bernie Mac, the first thing that comes to my head was uh, my milk and cookies, right? Because that bit about him raising his sister's kids. Um, Dave Chappelle, Killing Me Softly, the bit where you know, the, the baby's on the corner, selling weed, and he's like, hey, baby, hey, baby. Like those things stand up, like stand out, like Steve Martin, wild and crazy guy. Like there's, there's things, uh, uh, doors calling the dirty words. Like there's great comedy bits that everybody has. Like Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, I tell you, like <laughs> newer comedians don't have anything. 
They don't. And I started thinking, like, Gerard Carmichael's 37. And I was like, well, who's under 40 that's really good? Like, I like Carlos Miller. He, Carlos is 41. I like Chico Bean. He's 37. Um, I'm not a big DC young fly guy. But I respect DC because DC, he seems like DC wants to get better. Like, he really, like, I think he's really listening to older comedians. Like, he's really improved, like, being a host of things like that. Because at first, you expected him to be the second coming of Chris Tucker. But Chris Tucker was a genius uh, at 19. And DC isn't a genius. But he has his fan base and people like him. I just wish this era doesn't have, like, a Mount, a Mount Eddie Murphy. Like, the comedians of the past, there's always been those dudes or w- female comedians that you want to aspire to be. For the Def Jam, Def Jam era, it was Eddie Murphy. Like, Eddie Murphy was a savant at 19 years old. Like, you, that's just hard. To, what he does is just, you can't do. But they want to get close to what Eddie Murphy was. But there's no Mount Eddie Murphy. Like, Richard, Richard Pryor was different because they saw Richard Pryor as a guy. It's like, we can't get the Richard. We might be able to get to Eddie because he's in our same age bracket. But who, but who is Robin Williams today? Who is Steve Martin today? Yeah, who, who's Jerry Seinfeld? Curb Your Enthusiasm just went off. And I was so mad that it went off because it is very smart comedic writing. Now, people say like they love Abbott Elementary, and Abbott Elementary is fine, but it's not Curb. <laughs> Curb is so good. And, it's, and a lot of times it's improv. That means these people are funny on their own coming up with these lines. One thing, another thing Gerard was saying is that he said there's a lot of comedians that uh, they post vi- these videos uh, that interact with the crowd and call it art. And he says it's not art, which is true. It makes me think of Matt Rife. They tried to make Matt Rife a thing last year. I remember Matt Rife, Matt Rife from, from uh, Wild and Out. I remember that he did a Kate Beckinsale. And then last, last year, that video kind of blew up for him. But then when he put out his comedy special, people said he, it was trash. Because Matt Reif isn't really a really good stand-up comedian. He's good at interacting with the crowd, but he's not really good at doing jokes. You got to know who you are. Like, Steve Harvey knows, I'm a good stand-up, but I'm a great host. And I think that's who Matt Reif is. I think Matt Reif, if he did, like, because Nikki Glaser does F-Boy Island. If there was, like, a, like a spinoff of F-Boy Island, Matt Reif can do that. Matt Reif can do uh, uh, any type of dating type show. That's who he is. He's not really a good stand-up. So, for Gerard Carmichael, because he, I think he's, he's he, he wants Dave. It sounds like he wants Dave to help save comedy. Dave already saved comedy. Dave, there's four pillars of Dave's career. Is when he was played the stand-up comedian in Nutty Professor, amazing, uh, Killing Me Softly, Chappelle Show, and and, and recently um, Sticks and Stones, masterful stand-up. Dave's done his job. It's up to guys like Gerard to carry that mantle. Do what Chris Rock did. 1993, Chris Rock's career was up and down. Like, he was funny in spots, but not total. And he he did CB4, Hilarious with Charlie Murphy, and then he disappeared. And Chris said he went to the lab because he knew if he wanted to climb Mount Eddie Murphy, he had to be better. He studied albums by Richard Pryor, Red Fox, George Carlin, uh, Woody Allen, uh, probably Miles Mabley, Eddie Murphy, um, just... Uh, Steve Martin, probably Robin Williams. And he soaked all that information in and learned the art of stand-up comedy. And then he came back out in 1996. The Pookie guy that we saw in New Jack City, gone. The guy that we saw in Boomerang talk, talking to Marcus <laughs> about women, gone. Flat top, gone. Close haircut. Gold teeth. Suited up. Bring the Pain comes out. Changed his whole career. Because he went into the lab saying like, I'm... I, I can be okay, Chris Rock, but I want to be great, Chris Rock. So for uh, Gerard Carmichael, if you want to be great, if you want stand-up comedy to be saved, you go into the lab. You work it out. And if it's not you, put put, put a show together. Feature young stand-up comedians and say, like, we have to, we have to do this because Dave Chappelle can't save us. Chris Rock can't save us anymore. It's on us. The question is, who's it going to be?